Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Strap yourselves in. This is quite a lengthy video talking about Google Fi. But before I get into the my ultimate review of Google Fi, let me just say this. Um, first of all, smash the like button, share this on social platforms so other people can hear what I have to say about it. And um, if you're new here and you just subscribed, thank you so much for doing so. I appreciate that. Glad to have you here and hope to see you in future videos and live streams that I do. Um, if you'd like to try out Helio Mobile, you get one month for free on me just using my promo code. It appears right here or it's in the description if you guys want to check it out. But let's get into today's video. So as I stated, the ultimate review of Google Fi, and I'm going to share the good, the bad, the ugly, my experiences, my memory, and the history of Google Fi. All that will be said in this video. It's quite lengthy, so grab yourself a snack and a drink, kick back, kick your feet up, relax, and let's dive into it. But before we dive into it, I want to show you guys some clips from my previous reviews back in the day on Google Fi. It'll kind of help give a pretty good context as to, you know, why things are the way they are now in my head. Check it out. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. And so in this video, basically I'm gonna show you guys how I have my Google Fi account pretty much set up. As you guys can see, I have Fi Switcher. And Mike did a live stream. With one of my data only sims, I put it in the iPhone 7. Um, so literally I have Hangouts because I am using Hangouts as my all-in-one. Uh, messenger on the iPhone 7. Now what's really cool about this is that while I'm using Hangouts as my all-in-one, so it's my, my phone calls for Google Fi, my text message for Google Fi, and chat, um, this will ring the, the Hangouts app when I get incoming calls, but the native dialer on my Pixel 3 will also ring. iMessage and FaceTime for those people who have iPhones that I connect with, and then Hangouts for text messaging and phone calls. Yeah, I just figured this would just be my setup. That was a pretty nostalgic video of a setup that I used to do back in the day that is currently present right now with Google Fi service being primarily on my Pixel 8a and the data only SIM in my iPhone 12. And I run it that way just because, um, you know, I prefer Android. <laughs> if I preferred iOS, then the main SIM would be in the iPhone and the data only SIM would be in the Pixel. That's just me. Well, it's funny to see like how I was using the Pixel 3 and the iPhone 7 together and then using now using the Pixel 8a and the iPhone 12 together. It's kind of interesting, although it is missing some things. And, and so right now you're going to get some of the negative impacts with Google Fi before I get into the positives. Uh, one of the biggest negatives, and it's not really Google Fi's fault. This is Google in whole, like in general making sure that the smart speaker didn't get initiated. Um, with Hangouts being gone, I know there's people that didn't like Hangouts. Oh, Hangouts sucked and all this other stuff. Hangouts was really good. It really was. I get that some people are just meticulous about things and they were like, oh, the green user interface of the app was just so boring. Okay, I get it, you know, but the functionality of Hangouts was really good. I mean, I was okay and able to understand the fact that with Hangouts, you know, you had chat, you had your carrier SMS, and then you had, uh, you know, a Google Voice SMS if you had a Google Voice number. You could you could tell the difference. Chat had nothing next to your icon, your or your profile pic, uh, in the chat thread. Um, carrier SMS would have a little, like, dark gray box that said SMS in it, and if it was Google Voice, then it was a blue box that said SMS in it. So you had you had a way of telling if you were using Google Voice carrier text messaging or, you know, Hangouts chat. Um, Hangouts was an all-in-one service, and I really wish that, that you know, the big G company would bring something like that back because that was the reason that it was so good to be able to use them. I had set Hangouts back in the day with the uh, Pixel 3 and the iPhone 7. I had set Hangouts to be my all-in-one for calls and messaging and even video calling. So you had the best of three. And, and it worked great. So if someone called my mobile phone number, both my phones rang, the iPhone and the Pixel 3. In this case, it doesn't work that way. They have separated the two. You have Google Meets for video calling and video conference calls, and then you have Google Chat. And now that they're separated, it just feels kind of dull and bland. Yeah, so, but you know, there are third party apps like, you know, if you're um, on Facebook quite a bit and all your family and friends are on Facebook, you can use Facebook Messenger to voice call, video call, message in chat form. 
you got it all right there. So that's, that's an all in one. So that's one of the things that I think that kind of hurts, you know, the current Google Fi experience that I'm having. And this is my experience. Other people that never had access to Hangouts because that was such a while ago, uh, wouldn't feel this way. But, you know, I always try to find the most interesting ways of using a service provider to my benefit. And that was one of the things is like having one app that governed all my calls, messages and video calls and being able to access it from any device, uh, even, you know, my home computer. So that's one thing that I miss. Another thing that I miss from Google Fi is the smart switching capabilities. Um, if you joined Google Fi wireless and you never experienced this, don't worry. Um, but for the old timers like myself, y'all probably remember this. But, you know, back in the day when it was known as Project Fi, you, you connected to either T-Mobile or Sprint's network. Um, and it would auto switch between those networks based upon uh, which one had the better connection. And it wasn't just for data. It was like, you know, voice and text. Um, so you had to have a Fi capable device. This is when you had to purchase a device specifically from Google Fi. Because if you brought your own device, which was like carrier unlocked, or maybe it was like an unlocked device that you used on AT&T and bought from AT&T, it would in theory work on Google Fi back then, but you had to, um, you were only stuck on the T-Mobile network. So you would get a SIM card, it would activate, and it would only put you on the T-Mobile network, no Sprint access. Um, only Fi capable devices were able to switch between it. And then you had people building apps like Fi Switch, which was a phenomenal app allowed you to force yourself onto the T-Mobile network or onto the Sprint network. Or you had the dial codes, which, you know, you could Google search, get the dial codes that would force your device to connect to a specific carrier for 24 hours, and then it would reset back to auto switching. So there's what, you know, for the pricing that you were paying for Google Fi, that made a lot of sense to have that pricing because of the features that you were getting out of it. And later on down the road, they started to implement unlimited plans. Like the, like now it's known as the unlimited plus back then it was just known as unlimited. Um, a lot of people really enjoyed that. And the fact that Fi went out of its way to kind of just make agreements with other carriers around the world, put Fi in the position of being the best international roaming service that you could use. It just works wherever you go. You fly in China airspace and it'll say on your phone, welcome to China. There's no programming that needed to be done, no rebooting your device, it just connected. You just could get online and search or you could make phone calls, etc. But now Fi doesn't have that going for them. The only network that it's using right now is T-Mobile. You know, back then it was using T-Mobile Sprint. Eventually US Cellular came aboard and now you had a three network carrier support back down to just one. Um, so you lose that. You're only on the T-Mobile network. Their plans today really don't make sense price-wise to me because the Unlimited Plus plan is, even though it did reduce from what it was when it originally first came, it was, I think it was like a $70 plan, reduced by five bucks, and now it's $65 a month. The Simply Unlimited plan, which is their new Unlimited plan, uh, for those who don't travel internationally, is 50 bucks a month. When you got a lot of prepaid MVNOs that are doing unlimited talk and text and 30 gigs of high-speed data for like 25 bucks, uh, $20, going to Simply Unlimited with Fi doesn't make sense when that charging you 50 bucks on Fi for the same type of plan. This doesn't make sense. I personally feel like they should drop that plan down to, you know, 20, 25 bucks, 30 bucks at least and bring down the Unlimited Plus plan from 65 to $50. Because the last negative thing that I know that people don't like about Fi is that taxes and fees are not included. And they're not minimal taxes and fees. Like on, like say on Helium Mobile, the plan is 20 bucks a month for me. My taxes and fees that's not included in that 20 bucks comes out to 62 cents. So my bill every month is $20.62. On Fi, if I had the taxes and fees on Fi, I could be on a $20 plan on Fi, but my bill would be $27 to $29 because of taxes and fees and sure charges. So that's another thing that's, you know, impacting their ability to really grow. So the positives of Fi, you know, obviously you, you have service that you can use around the world and not have to add on an international plan. That's pretty cool. They've since listened to a lot of us out there and added in a subscription on the Unlimited Plus plan. So... Uh, if you get the Unlimited Plus plan, you get six months of YouTube premium on them. I think that's pretty nice. Honestly, personally, if you're going to keep the pricing the way that it is, you should include YouTube premium for the life of the account. <laughs> that's my opinion. You, you get access to that. And, you know, if you create a family plan, you know, Family Link 
works perfectly with this because, you know, it allows you to pretty much see where each member on your Phi family plan is at um, using the, you know, the, the ability to track. Um, you have that ability within the Phi app as well as some of the other additional features like VPN. And then, of course, if like T-Mobile works good in your area, then T-Mobile works good in your area. Uh, one of the biggest key things is uh, with the Unlimited Plus plan, that's where a lot of the value is really at because you have the ability to, you know, get data-only SIM cards and more than just one. I could get four data-only SIM cards and keep four phones active with some service that it can be used outside of my house and off my Wi-Fi. But really, I could just use these two devices. Um, my Pixel 8a as my main device, my iPhone 12 as my backup slash daily driver device. And they both function just fine. 5G connectivity and everything. iPhones do have 5G connection now. Back in the day, of course, they didn't for a while when you put an iPhone on 5, but now 5G is capable on that. And eSIM is capable on iPhones now too, uh, which allows me to do what I still do, being able to carry two devices with me when I need to. Sometimes I want to be able to record something about my Pixel 8a, which is why I have a secondary device with me on, on hand. So I can record that video clip or make that, that video content for the channel. It allows me to do that. Of course, you know, there are cheaper options than being with Phi. Um, you know, because Helium Mobile allows me to earn uh, crypto rewards for just mapping, I can actually pull a second line on Helium and it would be free just for taking it with me wherever I go and mapping. I could do that. And then I would have virtually no bill. Um, if I wanted to pay out of pocket because I didn't want to mess with the crypto side of Helium, then I'd be paying 40 bucks a month, which, you know, is cheaper than 65 um, I honestly feel like that, you know, the Simply Unlimited plan should still be able to take advantage of the daily only SIM card feature because uh, that's one real big selling point to Google Fi that they could use to play for their advantage. It's such a very different experience in closing out this video from what Fi used to be exciting back in the day with a lot of the things that you got for your money. And today it's like you're still paying the same amount, but you're not getting those same things anymore. A lot of them have been taken away shut down replaced and it's like well why, why pay for it if you're not getting that same that same experience why are you paying for it because it made sense to pay that amount when you were getting those features but you're not getting those features now you know i have hope for google Fi to try and do something to disrupt the industry a little bit more and have faith that they might be able to down the road if they listen to a lot of their customers, including myself, who've all been saying, lower your prices because what you're giving doesn't match. You give less features, but you charge the same amount that you charge for when they had more features. That doesn't, that doesn't fly. It doesn't, doesn't fly fly. Anyways, you know, that is my thoughts on the past to the present of Google Fi, the service that I use. And, um, if you guys enjoyed what I had to say about it, smash the like button. Do let me know because, um, yeah, it helps. <laughs> it helps. Um, thanks for checking it out. Um, leave your comments, thoughts, emotional outbursts in the comment section of the video. Check out the description for some deal offers for you guys. We really appreciate that. Um, and then I'll see you in the next one. Law.